they were still in the children in exactly the same fashion as to was done in Russia, in Russia. They were stealing children, kidnapping, stealing from parents, taking children very early age to I'm not going to say other republics, but probably yes, other republics, not only Serbia. This was a regular shithole, this Yugoslavia. They wanted to kidnap me to live in Belgrade at a very early age. And we'll not forget the children. Uh, Neće da bude u Beogradu and teachers. Oh, so you don't want to be in Belgrade. Uh -huh. uh, it was like violation I have committed, basically, by... Basically, by saying, no, I don't want. Just like this. So oh, it was a fucking one month and a half, maybe up to three months of this rapping that was even used as a form of punishment. My sister would say, if you're not going to be good, then I am going to wrap you around and stuff like this. And she did. This is basically how it was. If you mind for the truth, exactly for me to tell you how it was. Nobody give a fuck if I would leave another day. This is exactly how it was. This, these are precisely the circumstances I grew up in. These are my circumstances. This is my account. And this account is de facto as it was. Without giving even a millimeter of the chance for any kind of mistake. Uh, the wrapping was used for three months with exactly what I stated to you. Uh, the distance of the fall they measured was 3 meters and 20, I think, they stated. Straight in the head. Is there like anything else for me to say? Yes, my sister was a career criminal at Osnona Shola Gurum. She was one of the best graders and with my father both insisted me have destroyed already other kids, have participated in the destruction of the other kids. She, I understood from other people, got account, hurt other children. So it's the kind of sickness that likes to choose on who is going to transfer into the next. So I don't know how the hell that went. Some people even insisted me that I inherited this because of my parents, because of my sister. Beautifully, I described there was a space between the scarf, between the garage, there was a space. It was up. I was even told, it was yelling, like, how did you get to the garage? How did you get to the garage? And so on. You're not supposed to be in the garage, and so on. That kind of stuff. It was my sister who was so wise that would always try to get me in trouble. Very, very strict. Well, it came out that she was the one who pushed me over the scarf for me to break my head. And trust me, I didn't break the head. Uh, it's just that, as I stated, I had God on my side and I met destiny with sword in my hand. There was another subject to negotiation during MK Uh So, guy just Peter Kapsch was extremely troubled with when was it exactly that garage went down. And so, guy just Peter Kapsch insisted that I have to say about maximum again the same shit as i stated applied to when did mk ultra started uh 
the same kind of scam, or if you will say that you have this bondage around your head that you didn't have one for at least one month and a half. Same shit. Everywhere psychiatrist Peter Kapsch was present already when I was adult, I'm talking about, they started to brainwash this on what you're going to say, on what you're going to say, and uh, how it's going to be seen if you're going to say this and that, what the people are going to think, and so on. And so I should be worried about what people would think and uh, how this thing would look rather than the truth which is very, very inconvenient. It's inconvenient because it demonstrates that much more, it's that much of a greater problem for my sister. Uh, if what psychiatrist Peter Kapsch insisted to me, I would state uh, six months, that's what he insisted. He demanded that immediately after that, the garage went down six months. These were his words. Uh, and he wanted me to meet the time when the garage went down uh, for what would be basically age five. I don't know when my grandfather exactly passed away. Unfortunately, I have a mother that does not want to share uh, birth dates. I think that, uh, however, that the garage did go down when I was like, four years old and uh, it was about uh, uh, somewhere at the end of the summer you know uh, like transition between the summer time and going to the fall is when father took the garage down. Hmm. Um, if I would go date wise I would go and I would say You know, I would, I would say, I would say August, uh, when I was like four years old, I would say August. Father used one basically for the summertime. That's what he told me back then, that he's going to still be using one for the summertime. Um, the point here is the garage did not go down any time when that stuff happened to me. Nowhere near. The garage stayed for another at least two years after the incident. So that doesn't apologize absolutely anything uh, in respect to what I stated. That would be that cops wanted to misinterpret and change. My mama, my mother even was thrilled about saying to me today, I repeated to what I told one guy here from the village and what I video recorded first at this house that I was three years old uh, by saying to me, no, it was not you who had fell down. It was your sister who fell down at age three. Well, so you know that the stuff I'm talking about is if even like this, if they even take that kind of stuff, that means it's very convenient for them. Let's hope I was two years and three months old. Uh, I I think I was two years and three months old. All right. When I say I think, let's hope it could be less. I was old. It could be. It it well could be when it comes to the garage. Uh, the garage, uh, the garage. I I started to go with the garage big time, uh, you know, when I was one year and uh, eight months. They already couldn't handle me anymore about playing everywhere, including going to the garage. Uh, and so when I consider that kind of stuff, okay, one year and you know eight months that I was like this already. Uh, I don't know how much after exactly that incident came to place, but not much after that, you know, because uh, that was like a prohibited place for me to go to even. Mm. So that gives me also an impression about what exactly went on. So that's why I said 
two years and three months somewhere, somehow estimated that. My sister during MK Ultra demanded from me to not even mention her. Uh, and then that she will disappear and this and that, and then that she has a cancer and that kind of stuff. Um, with the police officer literally inside of my room claiming me they are deleting absolutely every information about her even from my computer therefore my privately stored uh, birth dates from my sister and stuff like this with my sister inside of the room a police investigator who met me at the police station over a year ago now obviously uh, was an individual who always would get straight on my laptop open all the gmail accounts i have read every information copy to himself every information every email and also the reserve the right to delete if it was something that he deemed uh, would consent with the family members on how what and just go and erase the information right there in front of me giving me tutoring me giving me a fucking school on what i should and what i should not inside of my room on my computer having me drugged up and engaging in this kind of crime this was just a completely normal procedure for these people for them it was normal that's what i'm saying these people these people are criminally insane they're normal they're not ill they're not mentally ill they're just criminally insane because to them it's like normal to just go into the stuff like this for them it's normal uh i did miss my grandfather my grandfather was killed my grandfather was murdered uh my father stated to me that he regretted that he put his father over there but once he put his father over there in maribor he had no control over and could not bring one out from there anymore uh, i do not believe him uh it was a crazy environment after the grandfather was killed at this institution for elderly people he was beaten up and stuff like that over there in that institution the stuff that went on was not normal abused beaten up uh very strange circumstances literally with my father knowing getting into some kind of uh, arguments uh getting other people going after him giving up on it and soon my father my grandfather was gone even i think my father given okay to get rid of him they consented with him before they destroyed killed my grandfather this was life in yugoslavia after my grandfather was killed in maribor they would continue to bring me back to this facility where they tortured me already when my grandfather was there they already tortured me and they would continue to torture me giving me completely insane feedbacks such as uh, we killed your grandfather demonstrated to me the person who killed apparently grandfather who took pride and honor of killing him in my face is how he expressed himself because these people have no respect for life uh, they had nobody to fear, is what I'm trying to say. They had nobody to fear. Not no respect only for life, but they had nobody to fear. They explained to me that uh, if they want, together with my father, we would not make it even to Tselia. That just about at absolutely any time they can get us killed. They can get me killed. They could get us both killed. It's gonna be a car accident that's gonna look like. Even if they kill you right there at this institution, whatever it is they do with you. 
uh, they continue to deliver me there for many more years to come. It became one of the torture points, this location in Maribor, with people involved, of which some were Serbs. Uh, the individual who took credit for it, uh, for killing my grandfather, was a Serbian. I think it was a Serbian. Uh, that was a Serb. Probably a Serb from Bosnia. Uh, yeah, the Slovenian people. Uh, they didn't care. They didn't care. They did not understand, however, that I was growing up and uh, they were extremely certain about it. Uh, I disregarded them more and more and I started to threaten them back as I was growing up uh, when I was 14 years old. They did not understood that I already broke their country, Yugoslavia and the Soviet Union. Um, they would deliver me to God knows how many dots, Zagreb, Sarajevo, all over the Yugoslavia. And uh, they wanted to break me. The order from Belgrade was to destroy me psychologically, physically, uh, exhaust me completely before they would deliver me to Moscow or Belgrade, therefore to Russian Moscow back then I was in the Soviet Union or capital of Yugoslavia, Belgrade, today's Serbian capital. Uh, and so they tried to destroy me in Zagreb, in Maribor also, the place where my, my grandfather was in Sarajevo, in uh, many other locations, wherever they would transfer me. The same shit went on with Soviet Union, Russia. It's, they got me through Siberia even, where they would manipulate me and terrorize me. What I initially, at age 11, 12, took so deadly serious and resisted and it, it, it became the task impossible due to more and more and more degree. Uh, I was forced to reduce, based on the logic, the whole thing, from so many dislocations where this torture went on. You know, I was forced to reduce this stuff to just few. Uh, and then I said to myself, fuck it. Uh, we're just going to save it, we're just going to save ourselves for, I didn't want to let go, for Belgrade and Moscow, and the rest of it just sign off. Little did they know, and I did not even understood or knew, that I have already caused total devastation to Belgrade and to Moscow. They were a, like a walking corpse, just waiting to succumb, to fell down. What psychiatrist Peter Kopp stated me, we're going to be talking about this stuff, it's you. Remember, it's you. Yeah, this is how I went on RMK Ultra. The thing is that I didn't know that I already in certain ways I did not understand because in certain ways I did. When I was in Moscow, I expected them to fell down in 1984. In 1985 was already extremely unacceptable for me. Uh, it's when I started to ask them 
beginning the Lada Samara, I don't know what year was it, 1984, I think. Uh, how the fuck dare you, basically, even 1985, because they insulted me, uh, to think about the Soviet Union. How do you even dare to have assembly of the Soviet Union? And those over there in Belgrade, the same way. That's how I started to treat them. I started to treat them like a dirt. And this strategy of mine started to not pay it off. I, I started to get worn, tired, exhausted. Uh, and I reduced. And I no longer wanted to have any kind of confrontation, whatever, till they would deliver me to Belgrade and Moscow. And over there, it would be total kaboom, total war. I unleashed over there everything I had. And it was very successful. But the police, the Slovenian police, one of the people who was doing this kind of stuff got betrayed from the Slovenian police. They trained him. He was a neighbor right here across the street. That's a Don Ecolens. Um... He was one of the people who was involved in this shit. Occasionally would go at beginning at age 11, 12. He had some kind of relative, I think, that introduced him. He's got a relative, a police officer. It's something like this, that he's a relative of somebody, some higher police officer, maybe a police director or somebody. I'm smelling something else over there, that he is a relative of some police director or something like this and he would introduce them into this stuff so that's how we're going to do this stuff he became involved since I stated my age 11 12 little did those people I didn't know that I was so successful because I started to lose fight in locations like Zagreb Sarajevo. I dropped them because it was too much, too many locations. First, I dropped those that were less important. And then I even had to drop those because I wanted to concentrate on Moscow. And honestly, I started to believe that I'm not doing a good job. Slovenian police that escorted me to Belgrade and Moscow in this, they started to make fun of me, ridicule me that I am not performing anymore. What is the matter with you? But I did. In Moscow and Belgrade, I still did. I did. They made fun of me. But in 1989, Soviet Union was destroyed de facto. They just didn't know anymore how to get out of it. In 1989, the biggest dilemma was how to close the Soviet Union. And they started to stretch the complete fall, declaration of the fall of the Soviet Union for another two years. How about that? Little those guys knew in Maribor, where they were delivering me, laughing on my face, telling me about how they got my grandfather killed and how I'm next, that... The Yugoslavia was already kaput when I was like 14 years old. They did not understand any of that. And the more that I grew, the greater was the chance I'm going to get them by the throat. And the chance that they would get me killed, destroyed, became of lesser and lesser possibility. Till eventually Yugoslavia collapsed on its knees too. So I'm just giving you like complete, complete background exactly about how this shit went, exactly about what went on. The house was connected to a garage. Um, father asked me if I remember, if I recall, Aunt Minka was her name. Uh, do you recall Aunt? He does not. He does not remember. Well, you know. This lady, the aunt of my father, uh, definitely was not my mom. He, uh, 
he saw her as a mother, um, but uh, <clears throat> I think it was a lot of stuff wrong with his head. Uh, yeah, I remember the lady that demanded for me to go and uh, clean a truck of the coal they loaded into the garage, uh, demanded for me to go and collect the truck of coal, basically bring one inside of the house through uh, some kind of window was there that connected the house and the garage. Uh, that lady was fucked up. I was two years old. Fuck this. Excuse me to express myself. Coal is nasty. Uh, she got me up at bloody very early in the morning go get the call you're gonna do this you're gonna do that and uh, i was like yeah let's go let's, we're gonna do this i wanted to be helpful but uh, the way that she treated me was uh, actually quite nasty i today because i felt that i was always quite big and so on but today i'm I have to ask myself, was this lady even in the right state of mind? I think she was fucking crazy. And that was exactly the attitude I think that father inherited from her in respect to me. She had no fucking respect for me. Uh, as for my father, therma, stubbornness, uh, to the degree that he was labeled as mentally ill literally, because his father let him get away. My grandfather let my father get away with anything. <laughs> uh, and expected for me to go out there and do the stuff like, I don't know, children that are, I don't know, eight, nine years old, basically exactly that fashion. Um, father would have his say about when the coal came and this and that. That was a topic too. See, all the shit bothered him. He claimed to me, "Don't say this and don't say it during MK Ultra because I know the dates." Uh, apparently, he told me during MK Ultra. He told me. This is stuff I never talked with my father. My father never told me anything about Aunt Minka or any of that stuff in life. Treated me like mentally retarded person or something like this. This is crazy motherfucker. Excuse me on my expression completely. Totally crazy. I mean, insane. Uh, based on my memory, what I can say is my father stated to me during MK Ultra that he ordered one every two years. And that he remembers which year yes and which year not. He fucking remembered and remembers wherever was convenient for him. And wanted to twist the fucking lie with the police using a psychiatrist and do all kinds of stuff like he threw me inside of the psychiatric hospital my entire life. The way... In fact, he his conscious, so he could go and sleep on a fucking pillow full of problems that a normal person cannot fucking even imagine. You could actually go and close your eyes. I don't know what to tell you. Um, mental retarded, yes, insane, lunatic, yeah, but not me. Not me. Yeah, I remember the house. Uh, I remember the Aunt Minka. Uh, you see, uh, I remember when we got uh, a call the first time. Uh, that was when I was 
two years old, I remember. And then it was the second time we got one. And that must have been uh, at, at my age, probably four. Um, meaning that if they get very upset when I was at the age four. Uh, that garage was a fucking icy cold place. Like you go to Antarctica or something like that. The temperature was below zero inside in there. It was a icy cold place. Icy, literally. Uh, not even my friends wanted to come around and give me a company at least or whatever. That place sucked, boy. That was like a hellhole. Um, yeah. And then the fucking garage went down and uh, uh, basically we got the coal just like other people. So you didn't have to climb through the like a little window to get to the coal and with the hands uh, grasp on inside of the house and stuff like this so it can be taken upstairs. They didn't want me to bring the one upstairs or whatever. They just want me to go with little hands uh, through the hall and literally like in that movie from this children in London a long time ago. Uh, whatever. Kind of uh, interesting stuff when I recall, but Uh, nasty memories on this aunt. I don't have any good memories. She supposedly was uh, like mom to my aunt, Marlenka from Maribor. That's a sister from my father and to my father. Yeah, but this lady, this, this lady was, was fucking chaotic. She was disorganized. Uh, and uh, weird, bizarre, uh, insane, actually, acted, if you ask me. Um, passed through my mother eh, this obnoxious uh, attitude of uh, leaving your own child in a fucking solitude completely while conversing with the ladies like she had a good chit chat with my mama and with my sister with the females or aunt marlenka and so on otherwise she would be in her camera uh and would not want to know anything and it was sometimes quite nasty actually I don't know what is there to remember to tell you the truth. No. I even right now when I think about this stuff, I wasn't looking forward to that, to these memories. But if I have to, okay. Uh, it, for me, it's not normal to come home and basically not converse with one another, whatever. To me, this is not normal. To me, what's normal is normal family ambient relationship not isolating somebody completely so he can be more manipulative because you get friends out there you get people to interact with your work whatever you got money you can do that and to him well the system just you know what i mean this is the kind of attitude probably my mother inherited from her the type of treatment mistreatment on how to do it hmm. my sister my father can tell a lot about what else went on at Osnona Shola Girl before I came to this world. She's much older than myself. And I would look, there you have it. My mom is not happy. I wouldn't be either. As I stated, you would not believe. You know what she started to say? She started to say that it was my sister who had fallen down over, uh, over, uh, over this garage with her head and stuff like that. And you know why she stated that kind of stuff? Because I was fucking around with her 
when they threw me inside of the psychiatric hospital in 2013, I started to fuck around with her, asking her about strange incidents that took place at our house, mentioning her, the fall on the head, asking her if it was me or sister. And she was, I indicated her like, I'm not sure about it. And she was like a vampire. She had bitten in the face. The very next day, maybe already, when they had me drugged up, she approached to me and said, it doesn't really matter. We're not here to support mentally retarded people. It won't make any difference for if you don't know. Yeah, and this and that. Yeah. She's a special kind of case. It's going to be very difficult for her. She's making things very difficult for herself. Unfortunately, I am always trying to help out. So. Hopefully, she's going to try to help herself. She does not understand what, what, uh, what, um, what her, what, what she's gonna have to do. She doesn't get it. She is completely delusional about reality. My mama is in another galaxy. She is just sure, hundred percent certain that the moment when she will be interrogated will never come, eventually. Because of the people, the high clientele involved.